So now we run into another little brain melter, and this is known as something called nested loops. So how a nested loop operates is if we think about if statements. An if statement, again, we looked at it in the sense that I can write you know, if inside here, and when this is true, I add a new if. So all of a sudden, you know, I've got a, third, a second one. I could even do it again. I can continue to do these things to my heart's content. You know, this one belongs into this, this belongs into this, this is in the main program. We can do the same thing with loops. And what happens with that is we break down into two styles. We get what's known as my outer loop and my inner loop. Now, you can think of this like a, a little bit of a roller coaster, if you will. Basically, I start with the outer loop. That's my main loop. It's this guy. We kind of look at this code for a second. This is all kind of going on in action. We got two while loops running. So this outer loop, follow this dot. Well, what's going to happen? Well, I execute this while loop. So I go right here. And all of a sudden, you know, I'm at a crossroad. Do I continue with my loop? Do I just move on and get back up here? No. I have a new loop I have to go through. And guess what? Well, y is less than 4. That means I increment. So suddenly, y just got changed. y just became 1. But y is still less than 4, so I just ran through it again. So now it's 2. Now it's 3. Now it's 4. Because y is less than 4, this moves on. Finally, as you can see, boom, x becomes 1. And look what else I do. I reset. I reset Y. So as you can guess, I would go through it again. <laughs> I would run through this loop uh, another time. I'd hit this crossroad point right here, and I'd go one, two, three, four, move on to the rest of the code. And this is where it would stop. 